I am here today to talk a little bit about the IDB group work in the Bahamas, try to give you some examples of all the things that uh, Dan mentioned, <laughs> but also to give you a few thoughts about what we see uh, being the key challenges for development and growth in the Bahamas. And these are just thoughts, our view, based on research, on data, on some experience in doing similar things in other jurisdictions. But I am here also to listen. I really would like this to be a conversation, interactive. I don't like the word presentation. That's why I didn't bring any slides. And yet my iPad is unopened. <laughs> I really would like you to you know, make comments, ask questions. Uh, if you have a different view, a different thought, please chime in. This is a dialogue. And you are the ones who know best about your country, not the IDV or anybody IDV, IDV, regardless of what we have done before coming here. So yes, I have been the head of the local office for two years and three, four months now. I have been the pleasure of being in Grand Bahama before, uh, at least a couple of times before. And I do want to, to say that it's great to see you all again, those of you that have met me before. And it's great to meet the new, the new folks. So the Inter-American Development Bank Group is one of these big financial institutions owned by member countries. There are 48 member countries in the world that basically bought shares of the IDV. We call them differently, but I will try to, try to avoid the jargon after 18 years in the institution. So these 48 member countries own shares and therefore make decisions as to our key strate strategic issues like what are the sectors in which we should put more emphasis when we lend or give grant resources or provide knowledge, training, publications, or discuss topics with civil society. Civil society, another word for NGOs, <coughs> and academia, and entrepreneurs. If you look at the map of the world, the way we typically see it from this part of the world, IDV member countries include from Canada all the way down to my native Argentina, including everything in between, on the Americas and on the Caribbean basin. The one exception perhaps being Cuba, because they're not a member of the OAS, the, the Organization of American States. Small countries in the Caribbean, our friends on the right-hand side of the map, San Lucia, Antigua, Barbuda, so on and so forth, we can support them through the Caribbean Development Bank. So they are not direct members of the IDB group. Those are the, what we call borrowing member countries, meaning we can do projects in those countries, give them loans, public and private sector, give them grants, public, private sector, NGOs or civil society as we call them, and academia. University of the Bahamas being an example. Non-borrowing member countries, those who typically put the money. So we also call them donor countries. Those are the vast majority of Europe, some countries in Asia like China, South Korea, Japan. Uh, odd countries that you might not think are members of the IDB, Israel, they are. What do we do? For more than 50 years now, we have been <coughs> providing development solutions to member nations. And I put emphasis on development solutions because a lot of people just think about us and think about loans. Yeah, that is one tool. Financial instruments is one tool. But we feel that it's as important to provide knowledge, as important to put some data on the table about ease of doing business, to see exactly where you guys are and what happened with that World Bank-led index, and I emphasize World Bank-led index, that doesn't discriminate data from Nassau and Grand Bahama, let alone Freeport and Avaco and so on and so forth. It put the whole nation in one bag. So we can put some data out there. We can share some experiences about what we did in other places like Jamaica to help them improve in their ease of doing business index. That whether you like it or not, perfect or imperfect, most likely imperfect methodology is one of the indicators people look at out there when they look at foreign direct investment in any given country, including the Bahamas. So knowledge, I started with knowledge because I think that is important and knowledge comes in different flavors. One is data I just mentioned, another one could be actual training, creating capacities, like for example, enabling a small NGO in the Bahamas to get some knowledge on project management through an online course for free. And if you work extremely hard, you have to pass the exam, you can even get a certificate for that as an organization. One example of that, one Eleuthera. Hmm? They just passed uh, one of the 
I would say mid-level certificates for project management. Kudos to them. Mm -hmm. that, that, is, that is a way of helping and creating capacity. Third flavor of knowledge, so data, training, publications. Some of you may have seen some of our reports. Some say famous, some say infam infamous. I would say database, trying to provide an honest view of the situation. Not always good news, not always good news. One report I would recommend accessing online, and we can also show you how to get there online because it's a huge website. It's something we call the quarterly uh, Caribbean business report, the QB, we call them. The QB basically looks at six Caribbean countries, including the Bahamas, and first, it gives you a snapshot, literally a snapshot, a page and a half, maximum two pages, of macro stuff, macroeconomics. So where is the unemployment rate today? What happened with growth? What happened with ease of doing business? So on and so forth. And the rest of the document gives you a little bit of a flavor, perhaps three, four pages for a country, on a, on a specific topic each time. Last time was fiscal issues. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of stuff is going on about fiscal consolidation in the Bahamas, a lot of discussions about thinking about new taxes. Of course, business people in the room go like, wait a minute. But th things of that nature, at least to, to provide some independent perspective and some basis for comparative analysis. Hmm? So that's knowledge. What do we do with civil society? We provide them with knowledge, we provide them with some grants, with some tools, but we also ask them to help us figure out how to best help the Bahamas. So when we are in dialogue with government every five years to think about what are the next key topics, three, four, five, for the next five years, we want the input of civil society. That is what we call the country strategy. It's a, it's a, it's a document, it's a piece of paper. The importance is not in the paper, the importance is in the dialogue process that we engage in based on our analysis of the strengths and weaknesses of the Bahamas. And when we do that with government, we bring civil society to the table. Last week, October 30th, there was a meeting at the IDB House. Everyone is invited. Some people show up, and we say, this is what we are thinking for the Bahamas. What do you think? What are we missing? What, sh what shouldn't we be spending time and, and energy and money on? So we talked about knowledge. We talked about civil society. Let me talk about private sector a little bit. And I will invite my colleagues to jump in and please ask questions. An important part of the IDB group is about supporting development through loans and grants to private sector entities. Nothing to do with the government, nothing to do with increasing the fiscal burden to any of you, other way of saying increasing the debt, but yes to do with development impact. Yes to do with trying to tackle a structural problem that a country may face. Let me give you some examples. Energy in the Bahamas. You here in Grand Bahama are lucky, aren't you? Because you have a relatively better off situation in terms of energy. Somebody here, body language, I am big on body language. Somebody went like, what is she talking about? Well, compare yourself with the quality, reliability, and price of energy in the rest of archipelago. Let me exclude private islands. In the rest of archipelago, which are not private islands, and you will see that you are slightly better off. Is there room for improvement? Absolutely. Our friends at Emera probably have great ideas. But why do I talk about energy? That is an area where, from the private sector side of the IDV, be it a small, medium, or large loan company, we would like to influence. And we would like to say, are you thinking, business owner, company, about putting solar panels in your roof? We would like to finance that. How do we finance that? With market rates, so this is not cheaper than what your bank would typically give you, but with two add-ons that we think add value. One is longer tenors. So if your bank typically tells you five years for, I'm making this up, huh? five years for $10 million to put solar panels in your roof and perhaps other energy, energy efficiency measures like changing the light bulbs or the, the, the windows and so on, will say, okay, seven years for that. You're all business people, you know what happens with your return on investment. Another thing that we do is we try to take higher risks than typically the, the, the financial market in, every, in a, any, any given country will take. With that I mean, and I've heard that from many Bahamians or residents in the Bahamas, that 
Sometimes it can be frustrating when they go to a commercial bank and ask for a loan. Unless you have a long-standing relationship with the bank, and unless you have a very proven track record and a rather comfortable balance sheet, it's sometimes difficult. Difficult for entrepreneurs, for, for people with new ideas to get financing. We try to be a little more flexible on our credit risk appetite. Are we perfect? Not at all. We need feedback on that. I am happy to say, and I will say something very general because we are bound by confidentiality and still not public because still not done, that we are working on one such project here in Grand Bahama. And we are truly looking forward to close that and sign that and, and share with you all what we think has been a wonderful job by our partners here. Other ideas of what we do in private sector is grant resources. I know that some, sounds a little bit weird. What do you mean? You give money like a donation, right? You give no, no reimbursable money to private sector? Yes, we do. They are difficult to get. They come with some conditions, meaning you don't get free money to do anything. You get free money to do something that we consider will help the whole community. An example would be to put some resources in something that is a pilot that hasn't been tested, and that by definition, trying to get regular financing for that would be very difficult. You either do it with equity, or if you're lucky and we like each other and we won't go through a very long process, you might get some <laughs> grant resources from us. Another idea could be if a private sector investor or, or owner uh, of a business, for example, the owner of a hotel, were to say, I would like to put some more resources into preserving the beach here in front of my property, but also perhaps a few miles to the left, a few miles to the, to the right, which is public park or, or, or public land. That is something we will be looking into as well. Mm -hmm. A third flavor of private sector of what we do, so I spoke about loans and grants. I mentioned energy in particular. The second example is more about environmental sustainability and preserving the environment. The third flavor is really only non-reimbursable resources, so only grant resources, that we try to, do, to offer to support what we call the enabling environment for private sector. Let me give you an example of that. And Michelle was uh, instrumental in these three operations that I will mention. These were about from $250,000 to $400,000 in grants to do in each of the three projects some training and support for bird watching guides in Great Inagua and Andros. So as I'm sure some of you have been to Andros and Great Inagua, beautiful, gorgeous places, small communities. They have a hard time. They have a hard time over there, right? In Southern Bahamas, it's not that easy to find a job, to get access to what some of us consider basic services and so on. Um, very successful project. What we do is we train people to try to find a way to earn a living. So it's kind of creating entrepreneurship skills. That's why we call it the enabling environment. Another example of that is fly fishing guides in Andros. A third example of that is sponge also in Andros. I know we've done a lot in Andros, beautiful place. Um, and, and those are, I guess, flavor number three of private sector support through different windows and programs that we have. I won't bother you with the names. But basically loans, small, medium, large, grants, for one specific corporation to do something that we feel it's very impactful, and three, grants to try to impact a group of people, Fly Fishers Association or Sponges Association or things of the like. <coughs> Questions, comments, thoughts? I'm from Argentina, we don't get offended easily. <laughs> Very thick skin, go ahead. Um, you may have mentioned already, but can you expound on whether the I, well, IIC, I guess, for instance, uh, provide technical assistance to small and medium sized enterprises in helping grow that sector of, of, of the economy? The IAC is now called IDB Invest. Technical assistance. He's been with us for a long time. That is uh, our jargon name for grants. <laughs> the IAC, very limited. It would be easier for the IAC to look at something like the example I just provided on the beach, conservation or restoration or preservation. I would uh, say to you, if you're thinking about entrepreneurship, creating skills, 
business um, strategy, financial statements, corporate governance, things of the like. I would say let's talk, but under a different window, which is the MIF, the Multilateral Investment Fund. Here am I again with my name. That is just a fund that we use for a private sector enabling environment. Mm -hmm. So it, it will be more towards that area than towards the IDB Invest. I think the bottom line is the group can provide that kind of support. We need to discuss why, because the key issue for us is implementation. Mm -hmm. It's not that difficult to get a project approved, even, even though when you are through a process it sounds very difficult. The most difficult aspects that we have encountered time and time again in the Bahamas and everywhere else in the Caribbean and Latin America is implementation. Mm -hmm. We say in my country, and I will use very Argentine Spanish, del dicho al hecho hay un largo trecho. Mm -hmm. From the word to the fact, there is a long road. Isn't there? <laughs> so the, the difficulty is in implementation. Why do I say that, Charles, when I answer your question? Because we need to find a very strong partner. Hmm? If they receive loans or grants or they are in charge, like an association, or executing some sort of non-reimbursable support for a group of smaller businesses, we need to find a very strong partner. And it's about trust, isn't it? Isn't it always about trust in life? We feel it's about trust in business, in development business. And for that, we get to know each other. We have to dance. The first dance and the second dance and see again. <laughs> well, you got offended for that. Okay, let's talk again. But that, that is the way. So to me, it's more about the strength of the partner so that we are uh, very comfortable that they are going to be able to deliver. Hmm? Yes, sir. Yes. Can you expand how, how that works, particularly with uh, businesses? Yes. Um, one of the key pillars that we have in our work plan, I would say, from the private sector side of the IDV group are energy, and by that, by that we mean energy efficiency and renewables. I should say clean energy, because some people consider LNG not a renewable source of energy. So perhaps clean energy to, be, to include LNG. Transport, and that is maritime, air, ground. Financial services, which I think is a little bit more difficult in this country, but it is one of our core areas. Agribusiness, also a little bit more difficult in this country. And finally, only for the Caribbean, sustainable tourism. So for the Bahamas, energy, transport, sustainable tourism. Those are the key private sector focuses. On energy in particular, given the energy matrix of this country, energy specialists look at the country and say, what are the sources of production of energy? That is the matrix. What is the cost of the energy? Is that renewable or not? So what about sustainability? Is that the service is reliable or not? What about reliability and so on? So when we look at countries like the Bahamas, not the only one, but it's pretty acute in this country. Energy is one of the key challenges for growth, for productivity. That's why we would like to support private sector people who want to do some, something different about energy, try something different. So I don't know what business you're engaged in, but let me give you an, a hypothetical. Let's say that you are in the business of producing water or you are in the business of bottling water, or you are in the business of bottling sands, beer, or calique, or anything like that. <laughs> well, it takes a lot of energy to do those things, right? And I'm sure your energy bill every month, whether you are in the Grand Bahama area or somewhere else in the country, is pretty high. Therefore, your cost of doing business is pretty high, your end product is pretty high, you are not very competitive outside of the local market. Hmm? What we try to do is try to say, if your cost of energy, your energy bill every month were to be lower, because you are still tied to the grid, but you are generating some of your energy for self-generation, let's say half of it, by putting panels on your roof, or in a structure next door, or on the ground, then we want to talk to you about it. How does it work? Typically, that will be a loan to a company, to an existing corporation. 
that existing corporation for our internal requirements will have to have at least three years of existence, meaning three years of audited financial statements. And I know that is a lot to ask in an environment like the Bahamian environment. A lot of people tell me, what do you mean audit financial statements? We've been here for 20 years with my family business and we're doing extremely well. No auditors, please. All right, sorry. If we need to talk about this kind of partnership, we need to see at least three years of audited financial statements. Do you want to see everything read in your audit financial statement? No. <laughs> we need to see some sustainability from the financial point of view in that audit financial statement. In the case of solar panels, just to continue with my hypothetical, we would like to take a look at your energy bill. We'd like to run some projections and see, okay, how much money could be saved if this investment is made? What would be the return on investment? Will this company be able to pay us back in X number of time? So the typical credit risk analysis that any commercial bank will do, we will carry out as well. Why? Because we're talking about something that we believe from day one, it's transformational for a country like the Bahamas. We're talking about clean, sustainable energy. Um, other requirements that we will put on the table have to do with environmental and social. Not the case of the example, but some other uh, projects that we have seen do have some positive and negative externalities. I'm talking like an economist, and I am not one. Positive or negative effects, we would like to see uh, you know, make sure that whatever we are financing doesn't negatively impact, for example, the environment or the community that is next door to your plant and so on and so forth. We will also, and I'm talking now about diligence requirements, right? We will also like to take a look at the corporate governance. Mom and dad and cousins get together every so often and we decide what's happening with the company. Beautiful, I also come from a, an Argentine-Italian family. We do business like that, not so beautiful for a bank. <laughs> so you will have to take a look at corporate governance and see if it really works, more or less, in accordance with best practices. But that, that's how it works, sir. To be honest, from day one, when we start talking seriously, meaning a Monday letter signed, to the date on which we can sign and disperse a loan, Michelle, I'm looking at you, six, nine months? All right, so that is a kind of process. If you are a repeat client, we like repeat clients, then the time is, is shortened because we already know each other, we have seen your background, we may have some additional questions depending on what we are financing the second time around, but that is how it will work. Hmm? Just to tag yes, sir. Just to tag on to what you said, um, okay, you talked about the length of time from the initiation of the application until completion. What is the equity requirement? Yeah, it, it will depend on the size of company and the amount of our loan and what we are financing. But typically, we, don't, we are not going to take a lot of risk without having a, a good chunk of equity. Hmm? Uh, I, I don't want to give you percentages because it will be unfair because I have seen the 80-20s of the world, which are, oh, really, and then you are financing, but I have seen different things as well. Hmm? And if you're talking about a greenfield project, for those of you who have some background in infrastructure and project finance, those that you set up an SPV, a company, to do something specific, for example, it's not longer a um, panel on, on the rooftop, but now uh, a farm, hmm? a solar panel farm. Okay, if, if we were talking about greenfield projects, more equity requirement, hmm? less history, no cash flow, so on and so forth. Hmm? If we're talking about an existing brownfield, existing project, then we can be more flexible. Hmm? You ask about interest payments. We can be flexible in how we set up the interest payments. We typically give a rather generous grace period. Um, bullet loans, difficult to pass credit uh, approval. Some loans that have perhaps 18 months of grace after, you know, once you put the panels on the roof, sorry, I'm repetitive with the example, could work. Hmm? Basically, once you start seeing the decrease in your bill, you start repaying. Hmm? As I said at the beginning, interest rates are market rates. Your tenor will be a little bit longer, though. Hmm? A little bit, a year and a half, two years, depending on what you're doing. For more information, the two ladies there. Believe me, they do that day in and day out. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. What is the uh, financial framing to your windows? Uh, is there a minimum amount for your loans and grants? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. 
On the grants, we can be more flexible, and I will give you a couple of examples. There are something called tiny little grants that I can approve here out of NASA that, um, for example, could be $5,000, $7,000, $10,000 to a Chamber of Commerce to look into something that they want to accomplish. And we have done that with nonprofit organizations in the past. One of the highest grants that we're considering for the Bahamas for a private sector company is a quarter of a million dollars, $250,000. Difficult to get, they don't come by themselves, is typically when we have a partnership going. I go back to what I said before, we trust the partner, it's typically when that happens. Um, grants for the enabling environment, the association, the fly fishing, so on and so forth, $350,000, $500,000, thank you, Michelle. I will share with you one grant that is in the making, and they tell me from headquarters this morning it will be approved early in December. This is a half a million dollar grant for conservation, and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> um, it took me a little while to explain to a Japanese donor the importance of conch in this country. But once the Japanese donor understood the importance of conch, not only from an environmental point of view and conservation of the species, but also from a national cultural point of view. They said, okay, we'll put half a million for that. So that, that is a grant that it's um, new, crossing fingers to be approved early December. Uh, two NGOs are going to be managing that money, executing, mm, going back to the implementation. They are the BNT and the TNC, Bahamas National Trust, and the TNC Bahamas, now the Nature Conservancy Bahamas. Did I answer your question? Did you ask something else, sir? No, that's, that's it. All right. That's all the windows. No, th those are grants. You ask about loans. Yes, we do have a minimum size of loans, because honestly, unfortunately, I should say, we're not equipped to do uh, micro lending. We don't have the people, we don't have the capacity, our transaction costs, everything we ask for and so on are too high for micro lending. Um, so I, I cannot really consider on private sector loans anything under $3 million. And I know that sounds like a lot of money in the context of the Bahamas. One thing I would love to do, anybody in the room, any friends, family, is find a financial intermediary who is willing to take from us much more money than that 10, 15, 20 million dollars, turn around and own land to the smaller people. I would love to find a financial intermediary who, do, who does that. Doesn't need to be a commercial bank. It could be a credit union, it could be you know, somebody else. So that's the challenge. Very quickly, I, I want to talk about public sector loans because this is what you hear on the news all the time. So public sector loans, our more traditional product, and public sector grants, these are grant resources um, in the Bahamas, about $6 million approved today, half of that yet to be dispersed, to uh, support the people of the Bahamas through the government of the Bahamas on different matters. Let me give you some examples of where we put donations for to develop the National uh, Development Plan. Mm, that started with a grant from the IDB. Another example, the Sustainable Development Plan for NASA. Another grant from the IDB, slightly shy of a million dollars. Another example, the parole system. You may have heard we are looking at our, our uh, emergency's prison, finally, and looking at some data and trying to see if we can come up with a parole system for, for the country, because crime is an issue. And the cost of having people incarcerated is not only social and cultural, it's also financial, and because recidivism is high in the country. So those are examples of grants of things we, we have uh, supported, I guess, Another big grant, uh, Sustainable Cities NASA initiative. $1.1 million looking into different areas of NASA and the greater NASA area, see how they can uh, improve some of the aspects, for, for example, urban transport. Mm -hmm. On the loans side, you may have heard about our loans. We have about 10 loans in portfolio, public sector loans in the moment. These are um, resources that the government borrows from us. These are very long tenor loans. We're talking about 25 years for investment loans. And we are talking about uh, LIBOR, three months LIBOR plus 85 basis points of interest rates. Any of you with a little bit of um, commercial banking experience knows that 
whatever the government borrows in the market is much higher than that cost. And shorter tenors. And remember again, what does tenor do? Um, examples of loans that we have currently in portfolio or just approved this morning, um, our water project in, in New Providence that is coming to an end in June of this year, of next year, 2018. It has reduced water losses dramatically. Um, it has improved the WSC's um, financials um, significantly. Another example, uh, I will talk about the one that was approved this morning. The press release is coming out at 2 o'clock. Um, it's it's an, a coastal management and infrastructure program, uh, basically for climate change adaptation and mitigation, thinking differently about the infrastructure dollars that we put out there to protect our shores. Hmm? And it's not only uh, in Nassau Junkanoo area, but also an area in East Grand Bahama, an area in Long Island, and an area in Andros. Another example could be the Family Island Airports uh, project that is, uh, was approved by the IDB board in January of this year. It's pending parliamentary um, ratification for signing, and that is four airports, four airports in three islands. So two airports in Avaco, one airport in Eleuthera, one airport in Exumas. Another ex so those are infrastructure projects, right? Another example of public, public sector loan could be our citizen security and justice program that doesn't focus on the people who committed a crime, but rather focus on how to prevent committing crimes. So it's on the preventive side. Um, public financial management is one of our loans that has been in the news um, with some space perhaps two or three months ago. It's uh, about rethinking the way government delivers services and how the central government looks at public finances. Mm -hmm. So it has a component on procurement, a compo component on uh, statistics, a component on the management of public resources within government, no? The follow the money, I call it, follow the money trail. So those are the examples on the public side, but I know this is not a public crowd, so I just wanted to put that out there because those um, products are the ones that you hear about the most when, when you talk about uh, ID. More questions, comments, thoughts? Yes. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, for better or for worse, everything, everything we do is very public. And we have very strict access to information policies that go from day one when we start discussing an idea to the approval, disbursement, execution, implementation, and your question, you know, how is the implementation, the execution going, where is the money going? Uh, all of these projects that I mentioned are on our website and we can show you how to get there. Uh, the best way is, is www.iadb.org, I-A-D as in David, B as in boy, dot O-R-G. And then the best way is just go there to a search engine and put the Bahamas. And then you will see a page that has a little bit of information about the IDB in the Bahamas, a little bit of information about our team, but also a lot about the projects and the things we do with civil society and so on. Depending on where in the process of approval or implementation a specific loan is, you will have more or less information about that loan. I just referred to a loan approved this morning and a press release, right? So if you look for it, you will see the whole loan proposal, which is a document with many annexes describing what this loan is about, what they will do, that there will be a, uh, an executing agency, i.e. a ministry of government in charge of this, there will be a project execution unit, i.e. a devoted team of people to implement the project, and so on and so forth. Uh, when we close a project, so the other side of the spectrum, there is something called a final project report, and there you see what we think, not necessarily the truth, huh? others may have different views, but what we think went relatively well, 
not so well, room for improvement in any specific project. And those go back to as early as you want. If there is a specifically old project that you don't find on the website, please call us. Because there are some very old ones, given that our projects have 25 years of repayment, that are not that easy to find, the specific documents. These are PDF documents, but we can get them for you. And the IDV has in headquarters, if you don't want Florencia to know and you don't, you don't want to go through NASA Fantastic, there is something called the PIC, acronym for Public Information Center. So the PIC out in Washington will give you information about anything you want that we produce, from a paper that looked at cattle um, illnesses in Uruguay in 1978, Two, yeah. So just go to the big folks. Question. Yes. Is there an upper limit to what you lend in the country or by industry? Okay, public or private or both? Private. Private, okay. We don't have a country limit. Uh, we look at each project specifically. A country like the Bahamas, and this may sound like, a country like the Bahamas with a credit rating that the sovereign still has is a very good proposition for us from a private sector point of view. Yeah. So as, as some of you that may have had uh, exposure with credit agencies know, it's very difficult for any private sector company to go about the ceiling, the sovereign ceiling of the rating. Well, in this case, that is not an issue. Mm -hmm. Compare yourself with other Caribbean brothers and nations and you will see what I'm talking about. So there is no per country limit. It's more on a project by project specifically. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do have a floor, as I said before. We can't really do the smaller things, even though here they may be considered medium size. We're not ready for that, I'm sorry. I can talk forever, and I, that is not the, the, the idea here, so I do want to say thank you so much for your attention. Thank you for dealing with my very long name. All of you pronounce it beautifully. You can choose whatever you want, Maria, Florencia, F, <laughs> Flo. No, it, it's been a, a pleasure for me to have this conversation with you all. Um, you know where to find us. Some of you got my car, and if not, just go to a website. Um, the name of the rep is the one that they always put out there, so it's, it's totally fine. And I do want to say on a personal note, not only on my own behalf, but also on behalf of my husband, Brian, that was mentioned before, the, the fellow from Michigan, who chose to come to this beautiful weather rather than Michigan. <laughs> and the two kids, Julia, who is my daughter, who is 11, and my son, Sean, who is nine, that we are so honored and delighted to be in your country. I know that living in the Bahamas and being Bahamian or being a long-term resident in the Bahamas uh, sometimes might be frustrating to, to some of you. And you know, I hear people going, oh, this is wrong, and that is wrong, and this needs to be fixed, and da 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 da. I've seen projects in many countries. The IDV hired me as a, in kinder <coughs> 18 years ago. And before that, I worked in Chicago, and before that, I worked in my own country. Believe me, there is a lot going for the Bahamas. There is a lot going for this country. You have so much, not only natural resources. I mean, you look down the, the, the plain and you see beautiful islands and, and things that really look like out of the documentary, right? But you have a lot of talent in this country. Don't let anyone tell you that there is no talent in the Bahamas. Please, really, believe in your country. Continue putting the effort that you all put out there. Because yes, things may seem tough at times. It's better in the Bahamas. Okay. <laughs>